Uh, my name is TTJ Kevs Richard. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Please remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so that if I post a video, you'll be the first to, to, to receive it. Today we'll be discussing, or our discussion will be based on discrete mathematics. Discrete mathematics is one of the courses uh, in the higher level that we pursue in mathematics and computer science students. So, under this we'll be doing relation. relation. Before this video will end, I will try to explain relation to you. We will learn how to find the relation of a particular set. Then, we will learn how to represent relations on directed graphs. Or represent relations as directed graphs. Then we also learn how to represent relations on metrics. Then we will learn how to find the number of relations of a particular set. The number of relations that a particular set can have. Then if there is time, we we'll talk about the properties of a relation. So come with me. Okay, so let's look at what a relation means. You say the relation of a set are the subset of the Cartesian cross product of the set. The Cartesian cross product of the set. I will explain that in a jeffy. Now the most direct way of representing relation is the use of ordered pairs. And I hope you know ordered pairs. When we talk of ordered pairs, see, A, B is an ordered pair. 1, A is an ordered pair. So that's ordered pair. Now let's learn what is Cartesian cross product. If let's say we have a set A to be A, B, and C. I want to find a Cartesian cross product. It means A cross A. A cross itself. So what do we do? We represent this. We let the set, the members be here A, B, C. The cross will be here A, B, and C again. That's A cross it itself. So what other pairs are we going to have? We can pair A with A, A with B, A with C, B with A, B with B, B with C, C with A, C with our B, then C with itself. All these subsets, all these subsets, are relation of the set A. So that's what we mean by the Cartesian cross product of the set. The subset of the Cartesian cross product of the set. I hope you, you understand this. The next thing we we'll, we'll talk about is how to find a particular relation defined on a set. So come with me. Okay, so the rela how a relation can be defined on a set. So let's see how it works. They say, let the set A be this. If R is the relation with the other pair A, B, where A divides B. So R is defined on the set A. Then we are asked to find the members of R. If R is this, is is the relation defined on the set A, list the members of R. List the members of R. So what does it mean? This simply means A divides B. That means if you take two other pairs, the first man divides this, the second without any remainder. Without any remainder. That's it. So we can say our relation R will be, can one divide itself without any remainder? Yes, so one, one. Can one divide two without... Can one divide two without a remainder? Yes. Can one divide three without any remainder? Yes. Can one divide four without any remainder? Yes. Now let's go. Can two divide one without a remainder? No. Can two divide itself without any remainder? Yes. Can two divide three without any remainder? No. Can two divide four without any remainder? Yes. So two, four. So we count three. Can three divide one without a remainder? No. Three divide without any remainder? No. Can three divide itself without any remainder? Yes. Can three divide four without any remainder? No. Can four divide one without any remainder? No. Four divide three without any remainder? No. Four divide three without any remainder? No. But four can divide itself without any remainder. Then this becomes the relation R. The relation R. I hope you get that. I'll solve one more question on this. So that will be our best with it. Let's solve another one on the relation of a set. 
So say let the set A be this. If R is a relation defined on A, such as R is with the other pair A B, where A is greater than B, then find R. Find R. So what does it mean? It simply means we find we find another pair A B. Where the first one must always be greater than the second. That is all. So our R will be equal to this. On pair one with any of them, no one is less than each of them, so we can't do that. But we can get two, one because two is greater than one. Can we have two, three? No. Two with itself, no. Two, four. Two is less than each of them here. The only number that two is greater than is one. But we can pair three, one because three is greater than one. We can pair 3, 2, 3 is greater than 2. Can pair 3 with itself? No. It's equal. It's not greater than it. Can pair 3, 4? No, because 3 is less than that. Then we can pair 4, 1, because 4 is greater than 1. We can pair 4, 2. 4 is greater than 2. We can pair 4, 3. 4 is greater than 3. Can we pair 4, 4? No, because 4 is equal to 4. So we can pair that. Then this become the relation defined on the set A. I hope you get that. It's not anything difficult. The next thing we'll do is how to represent relations using directed graphs. So come with me. Okay, so our next stop is representing a relation using directed graphs. Using direct when we talk of directed graphs, there are graphs where we draw an arrow line from one element to the other because that element relates the second one. It's not anything difficult. So let's look at an example. If R is a relation defined on the set A as 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, where we have the set R as this, the relation R as this defined on the set A, then we say represent R on the directed graphs. It's not anything difficult. So how do we do that? How do we do that? So we just write list the element of the set A. So one, we have two here, three here, then four there. So how do we represent that? Look at the first element here, one, one. One, one is a self-loop. That means one relates itself. We call it self-loop. So this is how we do it. Look at it. I hope you get that. Interesting. You you will get to know more about self loop as you we proceed. Now two relate one. So we draw an arrow from two to one. So two to one. Look at it. Two to one. In the arrow line. Now the next thing is three relate one. So an arrow from three to one. Look at it. Look at it. So that's it. The next stop, three relate to. So from here to here, it must move from three going into two. Very, very important. Not two to, not an arrow from two to three, rather three to two. An arrow from two to three is two, three, not three, two. I hope you, you get that. You get that. The next one, is 4 1 so an arrow from 4 to 1 look at it the next one is 4 2 so an arrow from 4 to 2 so we go like that what's the next one the next one is 4 3 that means an arrow from 4 to 3 so this becomes the directed graph of this relation I hope you get that. It's not anything difficult. We'll solve one more question on this so that you will become abreast with it. Okay, so another question so that we can find directed graph, we can represent the relation on a directed graph. So we say if the set A is this and the relation R is defined on A as R equal to the other pair AB, where A is less or equal to B. Then it's the first aspect is list the relation R. Then represent R on a directed graph. 
I hope we do this too already, but we will see how we can solve that again. So we we'll find an other pair where the first one is either equal to the second one or is less than it. You see, it's either equal to it or less than it. So let's see how we solve the first aspect. So our R will be equal to so one 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 is equal to one. So one qualifies. One one qualifies. Then one two yes one is less than two. So we can get that. We can get one three. One is less than all the elements. We can get one fourth. Can we get two one? No, two is greater than one, not less than it. But we can get two two because two is equal to itself. It's equal to it. Then, then two three yes, two is less than three, so you can get two three. Two four yes. 2 is less than 4. 3 1 no. 3 1 no because 3 is greater than 1. 3 2 no because 3 is greater than 2. Then 3 3 yes because 3 is equal to 3. 3 4 yes because 3 is less than 4. 4 1 no. 4 2 no. 4 3 no. 4 4 yes because 4 is equal to itself. Then this becomes a relation, the relation R, the relation R. So the next thing is that we we'll learn how to represent R on a directed graph. We we'll learn how to represent R on a directed graph. So we come. So remember what we did. One, the elements of the set A. Three, then four, then four. So the first one, look at it. 1, 1, so 1 related self, what is that? Self loop, self loop. So we go that. I hope you get that. The next one is 1, 2, that means an arrow from 1 to 2. From 1 going to 2. 1, 3, an arrow from 1 going to 3. So we go. Then 1, 4. 1, 4. An arrow from 1 going to 4. So we go like this. 2, 2. Remember, this is self loop. So 2, 2. 2 relate itself. Like this. The next one, 2, 3. An arrow from 2 going to 3. So we go like that. Then. 2, 4, an arrow from 2 going to 4. So 2 going to 4. Look at it, so we go like this. Then 3, 3, self loop, self loop. 3, 3. The next one, 3, 4, an arrow from. So 3, 4, an arrow from 3 going to 4. So we go here, like this, and the last one, 4-4, four, four. that's a self-loop, a self-loop, so we have this like this. Then this becomes the directed graph of this relation, of this relation. I hope you understand that. It's a very nice graph, it's very simple, very simple. The next thing we will learn is to how to rep is representing relation using matrices, or how to represent relation on a matrix. So the next thing is uh, the matrix of a relation. How to represent a relation uh, in a matrix form? In a matrix form. So before we start, when one element relates another, then we call it an on state. It's an on state. But if it doesn't, then it's an off state. And we represent on state as one and off state as zero. When representing relation in a matrix form. So come with me. They say if they said this, if the set A is equal to 1, 2, 3, and R is the relation defined on a set A, such that R is equal to this or that place, represent R on a matrix. So it's very simple. R will just be equal to, for it not to confuse you, the number of elements here will determine the, the type of matrix. So if we have three elements, it will be 3 by 3 matrix. So let it be like this. 
you clean off this. I just want to use it to explain something to you. So we have this. Now check the relations. If one relate another, then it's an on state, then you represent it with one. If it doesn't, then it's an off state, then you represent it with zero. It's as simple as that. So one relate, one relate one. So does one relate one? Yes, it's here. So it's an on state. So one. Does one relate two? We have one, two here. No. So an off state. Does one relate three? Yes. One relate three. Is here. So an on state. Now we come here. Does two relate one? We have two one. Two one. No. So off state. We have two. Does two relate two? Yes. Is here. Is here. So an on state. Does two relate three? We have two three. Two three. No. So off state. Does three relate one? Yes. We have three one. So an on state. Does three relate two? Yes. Does three relate itself? Yes. Then you can clean off this. Then this becomes the matrix of the relation R. I hope you get that. It's very interesting. It's not anything difficult. I hope you understand. We'll solve one more question on this. Then we we'll take it from there. Okay, so we have another question. One more question on this, and we take it from there. They say if a set A is one, I have a member is one to three, and the relation R is defined on A as R is the ordered pair AB where A divides B. Now list the relation R. That's the first one. Then the second one, represent R on a directed graph. Then the third one, represent R as a matrix. As a matrix. So what we do? This is very easy. So first the R. We list the members of R. So they say A divides B. That means the first element, the first Number in the order pair must divide the second one without any remainder. Without any remainder. So one can divide itself, yes, without a remainder. One can divide two without a remainder. One can divide three without a remainder. Can two divide one without a remainder? No. But two can divide itself without a remainder. Can two divide three without a remainder? No. Okay. Can three divide one without a remainder? No. Can 3 divide 2 without a remainder? No. Without any remainder? No. Can 3 divide itself without any remainder? Yes. Yes. So this becomes the element of, this, of, of the relation R. Of the relation R. Now the next thing is that we represent this R on a directed graph. We represent it on a directed graph. So we go. What do we do? We raise this. So 2. Then maybe 3. So now, check. So one relate one. What is that? Self loop. So one relate one. You go like that. Yes. One relate two. So an arrow from one to two. An arrow from one to two. <laughs> one relate three. So an arrow from one to three. An arrow from one to three. Then two relate itself. What is that? Self loop. The next one, three relate itself. What is that? Self loop. Then this becomes a directed graph of this relation. I hope you get that. I hope you get that. The next one, the matrix of the relation R. So this, how many elements is it having? Is having three elements, so it will be a three by three matrix. So I say always do this so that you don't get confused. One, two, three. So we go. So as I said, that's one relate one. If you do, then it's an on state. So one. That one relate two. Do we have one, two? We have one, two. Another on state. That's one relate three, yes. Another on state. Does two relate one to one? No. So off. Does two relate two? Yes. So on. Does two relate three? No. So off. Does three relate one? We have three one. No. 
to off. Does three relate to do you have three to three to three to three to no to off? Does three relate itself? Yes, then on. You can clean all this after that. Just it's just a guide. It's just a guide. So let's write our matrix very well. Then this becomes the matrix of the relation R. And this is the direct graph of the singlish. I hope you get this. I hope you get this. The next thing is how to determine the number of relations of a particular set. So come with me. So the next thing is the number of relations of a set. So we say the number of relations or the number of relation of a set, okay, of a set is giving us two exponents n square, where n is the number of elements of the set. It's very simple. It's very simple. So the number of relations that we can get from a particular set is given as this. Now let's see how we can apply that. We say if a set A is equal to 1, 2, 3, find the number of relations on the set A. On the set A. So the number, the number of relations will be equal to 2 exponent n square, where n is equal to how many elements do we have here? 3. So this will be 2 exponent 3 square. 3 square is 9. So we have 2 exponent 9. 2 exponent 9, I'm sure it's 512. So this set can have 512 relations. I hope you get that. I hope you get that. We'll end it here. Try to play over the video to get a concept. The next time I will post a video on this, we'll try to talk about the properties of a relation. Where we learn whether a relation is reflexive, antisymmetric, asymmetric, and uh, transitive. Transitive. So please look up to that. Until then, please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so that if I release a video, you'll be the first to receive it. Bye-bye.